I think it's a good idea. It won't do them any harm. To me, it's fine. Well, I'm not too happy about it. I don't see any problem with it. <laughs> not as the schoolwork was on, the education was on. I don't think there's anything wrong. They'll be together in the crutch and they'll be together in the nursery, so what's the difference in the primary school? Oh, with class getting split up, like he's not too chuffed about having his mates all the way from him. Well, there might be a bit of fighting, like, of course, you know what we boys are like, but after that, it'll be okay. But there's all sorts of people who give up their time, their money, who make sacrifices. The first colour that I want you to use is the red. Then we cut out some circles, remember? Okay, do you want to start now? Before you start, would you all make sure there is nothing in your balance scales, please? Can anyone tell me anything about the bones then? Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Sophie. This morning, we're going to have a look at this big picture book. Pick it up and set it back down the same place. So I want you to concentrate today on stopping the ball. Today's story is called Peace at Last. When St. Teresa's boys and St. Teresa's girls decided to amalgamate, it was bound to create a stir. From September, the boys and girls will sit together for the first time. The doors of St. Teresa's boys first opened in 1911 and the present building opened in 1939. The school, which has nurtured children through times of peace and social disorder, is thankfully going into its new phase in a time of peace and hope. Let me now introduce you to the present dedicated staff. First we will see Mrs. Maura Finch, Mrs. Mered Morris and Miss Deirdre Thomas beautifully introducing the youngest children to the joys of books and stories. It was very late at night. All the bears in Bear's house are very, very tired. Only one light is still on, the downstairs light. Daddy Bear yawned. Let's hear a big yawn. <sighs> Mommy Bear yawned. Let's hear another yawn. And Baby Bear yawned. Let's hear a little yawn. So Daddy decided, let's go to bed. So Daddy put Baby Bear on his shoulders and carried him up the stairs. Mommy Bear went in front carrying a little lamp. And Sophie's mommy said, a tiger. And the tiger said, excuse me, but I'm very hungry. May I come in and have something to eat? And Sophie's mommy says, of course, come in. Tell me this. Sporting a, sporting a tiger came to your house. What do you think your mammy would say? What would your mammy say? She would scream, would she, Jerry? What would your mommy say, Connor? You don't know. What do you think she would say? Come on in and have a cup of tea. Yeah. I'm tea with you. All right. I think if it were me, I would run out the back door and away up the street. But anyway, her mummy obviously liked tigers. So they brought Mr. Tiger in. He sat down at the kitchen table and started to eat. Sophie's mummy said, would you like a sandwich? And he said, yeah. And he ate the whole plate. Now, the book is called The Little Elephant. And there's lots of pictures in it. And I'm going to go through each of the pictures and we are going to make up the story this morning about the little elephant. Something happens to him during the story. How do you think the little elephant feels now if they're laughing at him? No, I don't think he's very happy. You said something there, Eamon. How does he feel? He's unhappy. He's unhappy because all the other animals are laughing, laughing at him. What do you think happens when we turn over? What might happen? Colin. Right, well, we'll see if he's in the water. Oh, he has gone off into the water. What do you think he might do now that he's in the water? 
Good boy, Joseph. How does he look? Angry. Angry. Right. Why is he angry, Joseph? Because he's in the water. Right. But why does he feel angry at the minute? Why is he feeling angry? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, first of all, we'll say the morning offering. Bless us. Now for some more introductions. Let's pay a short visit to the classrooms of Mrs. Fanula Lenehan, Miss Liz Smith, and Mr. Sean McGowan to get a flavor of the work that goes on there. Three important parts of the skeleton do protect the organs. Michael, that's not part of your, sc your skull, and your skull protects your brain, that's right. Elon, your spine, what does your spine protect? It's very fragile, what it protects, it's very important. Michael. Now for some serious work, and who better to do it than Miss Eileen Smith, Mr. Harry Glover, Mr. Brendan O'Neill, Miss Nula Campbell, Mr. Paul Curran and Miss Maura McCreesh. Important, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it. Come on. Cormac. The ribs. Okay, what do your ribs protect? And your lungs, that's right. Have you ever heard of people whenever the, the fall? Now, that your ribs are there to protect, but sometimes um, if they fall, what can your ribs do? Break. And what do they end up doing then? puncture in your lung. Whenever you cut your circle out, I want you to fold it once, that'll give you halves. Fold it again, that'll give you quarters. And fold it one more time and that'll give you eighths. Then I want you to cut out each eighth and try and make a parallelogram shape with it. Measure the sides of the parallelogram and see if you can find an estimate for the area that way. Okay, everybody go. So you're starting off 
drawing round your circle, cutting it out, and counting the squares to see if you can get an estimate of the area. Right. See so if you can get, you should be able to measure the diameter, the radius. Don't worry about the circumference today. Just get the area by counting the squares, the radius and the diameter. First color that I want you to use is the red. Dab the sponge into the paint, not too much paint, and go round the oil plate. Get plenty of paint round the oil plate. You need to get some more red paint up here. So you, can, you, want, you want to get it all covered. And you want to get round the oil plate. Because if you don't get round the whole oil plate, when you take, peel the oil plate off, then you won't get. You right, now is the paint okay? Jim, you need to get around the whole outline of the plane, okay? First of all, before you start, would you all make sure there is nothing in your balance scales, please? Right, you right. Now that's it there. No. Right, start and get you some. You start adding the weights. Try the different weights on it. Now that was five grams. Smaller one than five grams there? No, that's the smallest one. So it's not going to be as easy as measuring with that. Okay, let's see. Can we try something else? Try the crayons then. to probably turn your scale round a bit so that you can see both sides of it. Right, you back. Now that's it there. Who did he gather around him? Or who came to help him or to learn from him? The apostles. The apostles. Now, there were another group of people. They weren't specially chosen. The apostles were specially chosen. He chose 12. And they became the first bishops. But there were other people. And what did we call them? Disciples. And disciples just means followers. Right, read on for me, please. Rand Johnston. It is good to do without something that we like very much. We call this a sacrifice. Right. Who give up things? Parents. Our parents. Our parents give up their money, their time, their energy to look after their children. John Rand's Hatch. John Grimes had itch upon us. John Grimes had itch upon us. And they rocked it with camphorated oil. John Grimes had itch upon us. John Grimes had itch upon us. John Grimes had itch upon us. And they Music has always played a prominent part in the school life of St. Teresa's. This year,